In the first slide of this video, you can see Dr. Irene Pepperberg and Alex. Alex was a gray parrot who could use hundreds of English words. Alex could answer things like how many red blocks are there on the table, for example. Alex could indeed communicate with humans, but Alex could not use English or any other human language. We see this uh, whenever we try to communicate with animals. Animals can communicate amongst themselves and with us, but they cannot use language like we do. In this video, we're going to look at a few animal communication systems and at what makes human language so special. So undoubtedly, many animals are intelligent. Here we see examples of animals using tools. For example, that's a bonobo fishing for termites with a stick. There's a crow using a stick to fish for worms inside of a tree. There's a dolphin using a sponge to sort of sweep the ocean floor and find food. And there's an octopus uh, with a coconut shelter, which they use, with coconut husk, which they use as shelter. Think about what all these behaviors entail. They require planning, first of all. If a bonobo wants food and wants to get it out of a termite nest, uh, it needs to think of, well, the stick can go inside of the nest's hole and this can get termites out of it because they'll stick onto it and then they can go into my mouth. This is a lot of planning. It requires memory. It requires um, holding in, in your memory what the stick is for, what the termite, contain, uh, termite nest contains. So it needs planning. It needs social learning because these, these behaviors are usually taught uh, within the species. They're not innate. They're not instinct. One bonobo teaches another how to use these tools. And it requires a mental model of reality. It requires the bonobo to know what a stick is, and what a stick is for, and the shape of the termite nest, and so forth. So these are undoubtedly intelligent behaviors, and comparable to what humans do when they use tools to look for food, for example, and to build shelter. Animals also have very complex communication systems to communicate with one another. A wonderful example is the dancing of bees. So you can see on the upper left on figure A, how a bee, this is a diagram of a bee dance. A bee would wiggle for an amount of time and then would do a loop, wiggle again, and then go back and start to wiggle. So what does this wiggle mean? The first element we need to look at is the angle. So the example A is about 45 degrees inclined from uh, a line going towards the top. So 45 degrees in a dance means the following, that the bee needs to find the sun and then go 45 degrees to the right. If the dance was, um, you know, horizontal to the right, this would be 90 degrees. So the other bees would need to find the sun and go 90 degrees from it in direction, in the direction of the bee. So the inclination of dance tells you the angle that you need to veer off from the sun's position to find the food. The second element of the dance is the amount of time that the bee wiggles. So if they wiggle like this for one second, this means that the food is roughly one kilometer away. So if the dance is 45 degrees for let's say two seconds, it means that the other bees need to find the sun, go 45 degrees from it, and then fly for two kilometers in order to find source. And they do it. The other bees in, in the hive understand this kind of dancing and can find food very efficiently. This requires memory for knowing where the food source is. It requires some complex uh, geometry to understand the relationship between the sun and the food and the beehive as well. These are examples of songs of nightingales. As you can see, they have uh, look at the pink section, for example. They have patterns of chirping, which are variable. They're not always the same. And these songs are taught from parents to children. They're socially learned, just as how we humans learn our skills, by observing and imitating others. So many, hum many animals have complex communication systems. However, these systems are closed 
systems. They only have a finite number of messages that they can communicate. Humans also have closed communication systems. For example, the signs at the airport or the signs on the street. There is a finite number of signs that you can see at the airport and you're used to them. So that if someone invented a new one, you would have very little idea of what they mean. Or if someone invented a new road sign you have ne you had never seen, you, have, you would have no idea what they mean. So these systems can communicate an idea. For example, that there is some shopping, or that there is a taxi, or that an airplane is leaving or arriving. They can communicate ideas, but they are closed systems. They only have a finite number of ideas that you can communicate. Also, there is no obvious way to combine them to make new ideas. If you have the sign for passport and the sign for rocks on the road, there's no way that you can combine these systems to mean the passport is under the rocks on the road, or the passport was uncovered by the rocks falling on the road, and things like that. So these systems are finite, they're closed, they only have a limited number of messages, and there's no way to combine them to form new ideas. If you have these two signs next to one another, they mean nothing. Human language is different. Every human language uh, is made up of discrete parts, such as phonemes, and then morphemes, and then the morphemes make up words. So usually a couple dozen phonemes, a couple hundred morphemes, a couple thousand words. There's some dis number of discrete parts, but these can be combined to make an infinite number of sentences. We call this property creativity. So you can always combine the words of English to make a new sentence of English that no one has ever uttered before. And other speakers of English would understand these sen th this sentence, even though they have never heard it before. We call this creativity. Also, human language is open-ended. We can invent new words. Bees could not invent a new dance, if, even if they wanted to. But we can invent new words for concepts that we have never uh, seen before, but now we've come up with them. Also, humans can talk about things that are not physically there and now. We can talk about the past. We can talk about the future. Animals, we've never found an animal that can do this. We call this property displacement. So again, human languages are created. We can use a limited number of sounds of words to create new sentences that could communicate any thought that a human has. Animal communication systems don't seem to do this. They can't take their components and recombine them in new ways. And by the way, you give this a try. Try to think of a sentence in English that no one has ever uttered before. We'll talk more about it later. Uh, yes, before I go on, by the way, the uh, the rules that make it so that you can create new sen new word uh, sentences and words, we call that grammar. It's the rules that allow you to recombine phonemes, and morphemes, and words into new meanings. Can humans can animals learn human languages? We have never seen one do that. There's famous animals like Washo, like Coco, like Alex that have learned a lot of uh, words in human languages but they don't seem to, to have the property of creativity. They can't combine their elements to create new sentences to communicate with humans. Also, their communication is immediate. They don't seem to talk about the past or the future, only about what's in front of them right now. So Alex, for example, could answer a lot of questions, but only questions that it was trained to answer. What about dolphins? We're not sure. There's a lot of research, you know, maybe they will be able to use some, maybe they are able to use some form of language and we haven't been able to detect it yet. There's an article over there that talks about how they have different dialects and how they communicate. Maybe they do have language. We haven't uh, discovered dolphin language yet, but maybe they do have it. In summary, as far as we know, language is unique to humans. We take discrete elements, and a very limited number of discrete elements and combine them in an infinite number of ways. We have rules to do this, and we call those rules grammar. And all human languages have grammar. 
a way of combining words to create new sentences. Animals have communication systems, but they don't combine discrete elements in infinite ways in the way we do. This is what makes human language so special.